All right, everyone, so we need to uh, set up our code so that we deal with the boss. Up to this point, we've got one wave of bad guys floating around. Once the timer runs out, then it takes us to the boss level. So opening up my actions panel here. So I've got the section with the timer. Function timer countdown function game timer end. So once the game timer at this point ends, it takes us to scene one boss. Over at scene one boss, we have the boss. The idea is that it's going to grow bigger and come at us. It's going to be far away and then come at us. So we need to set up that animation first. So first what we need to do is turn this into a symbol. I'm going to select it, press F8. I'll call this MC Boss 1. Type movie clip, registration centered. Then I'm going to shrink it because he's far away. Frame 96, right click, insert frame, same as F5. And then in between, right-click, create motion tween. So by the 96th frame, he's then going to grow larger. And this is going to animate that. It's just going to grow larger coming at us. All right, that's going to need an instance name. MC boss one ghost or anything you'd like to call it of course I'm gonna go with MC boss one ghost next I need action script so action script uh, frame one so I simply have that call layer two that should be called actions layer one is called boss I'm gonna lock boss layer, go back to actions, and I want to extend those actions all the way to line, uh, frame 96, so F5 there. And then on frame 1, I'll open up my actions. It's got a stop, which of course we don't want, because uh, we don't actually want this to stop animating, so comment that out. Just like before, we're going to create variables that represent the hit points of the boss. Var MC boss 1 ghost hit points. This is a number. So the boss hit points will do 10 var mc boss one ghost current hits that's a number zero we haven't started to hit the boss yet well that looks familiar that looks exactly like before in terms of the other sprites we need to then say mc boss one ghost dot add event listener That is like before that we need to define whenever we tap that boss, something happens. We're waiting for a touch event dot touch underscore tap comma. This will be FN MC boss one ghost hit. We therefore need to define that function, the end of our function. That had colon void, and that was based on an event of touch event. So we're still using the current score variable that we created back on the previous scene that keeps track of how many points we've got. We're incrementing the number of hits we've given the 
the boss. So I'll just copy that. Plus plus our game score text box needs to be updated with what the score is. We've seen that before. That was back on the previous frame. So that'd be safe for you to copy and paste. I'm going to do that actually just to make sure because you never know how sometimes you might misspell something. And then we'll have a, an if else statement because this one really cares about if we hit the boss enough. If we have hit the boss enough, we defeated the boss. Or else, if we haven't gotten to the hit points yet, keep fighting. Well, what we're checking, as usual, is if the current hits exceeds the hit points. So at this point, I'll test it to see if um, the boss is coming at me and if I have any errors. Remember, if you get any errors, double click the error and try to reread your code and see if you typed it properly. Now, this won't fully work yet because the points will not be updated on screen because we don't have the text box on screen. We're going to need that text box on screen every time we want to update it. So I do see the ghost coming at me. I do see the boss coming at me, and then it jumps over to this scene ends, and it goes to the next scene, which is the game over screen, but then it goes back to the title screen. So it's getting there. You don't see the points increasing on screen because we don't have that box. So I can actually just copy it from the previous frame. Back to level one. I'm just going to select the whole layer, text boxes layer. You can select the layer, right click it, copy layer. In this scene, I'll right click and paste. The layer came in automatically with the boxes, their instance names, etc. So now when I run it, and I try to tap the boss, I should get points increasing. The timer won't decrease. That's fine. We'll do that in a moment. All right, so you should see a result. The boss is going to come at you. You tap it, the points increase. So the idea is either the boss will get you on line 96, you're dead, it's too close, or you will tap it enough times, in this case 10 times, to kill it to take you to the ending. Now the end currently just has game over, start over, quit. I want two different endings here. I want the ending that if I killed the boss, this game over will say, game over, you win. If I didn't kill the boss, it'll say, game over, you lost. So in this layer, so in this scene, I'm going to have a new layer called labels. I'll select that first frame. And now on the property, there's a label, which we will call ending good, no space. 
So I've attached a label to that frame. I'm going to extend these frames of layer 1 all the way to 20, F5, and then on frame 10, F7. So you see there's the ending good label. I've given that frame a name. I'm going to extend to frame 20 right there with F5. And on frame 10, I'll give that a label ending bad. So select frame 10, properties, ending bad. In ending good, I have a keyframe. In ending 10, I have another keyframe, F6. So I can change the good ending. We'll say game over. You win. In frame 10 of layer 1, I'll say lose. So you see I've got the good ending, I've got the bad ending. So what I have to do is set up the boss that if it reaches all the way to 96, it'll automatically go to the ending scene, the ending bad frame. If I manage to instead kill the boss, tap it enough times, reach its hit points, it'll take me to S2 end, ending good. So we can do in our code back in S1 boss. That's what this if else is about. I've defeated the boss, so therefore take me to the good ending. Movie clip, parentheses, dot. This time we will do a go to and stop instead of play. This dot root, and then we have to say here, instead of frame numbers, we can use those labels. Quote, ending good, comma, of the scene, S2 end. I'm going to copy that. And so if we do reach frame 96, we've lost. So we need F7 on frame 96 to start a whole new frame. I'll paste in what I copied, but instead I'm changing it to ending bad S to end. So I'll test that. I will first not tap the boss to increase the hit points and see if I get the bad ending, because the boss got to me and it'll jump to the ending bad label of the scene to end. And so yeah, it got up to frame 96. It jumped me to game over, lose. If I close the game and start it again, and this time tap the boss the requisite times 10 times, it jumps me to game over, you win. So you see, this timer is not really necessary because it's based on the amount of time that elapses on screen. Four seconds is the maximum amount of time to kill the boss. So we're not going to need the countdown timer for the boss. I'm just going to delete it. It's these four seconds that is our timer. From the game over screen of either you win or you lose, I want to uh, show how many points I've gotten and then to be able to start over. So I'm going to copy the text box, the game score text box from the text box layer. I'm just going to copy the text box layer again into the ending 
paste the layer. So it already comes in, instance name and everything. We just then need to say, change that box to show the current score. So that will be the code we've seen before already. Game score text equals whatever it is. We need that on the ending layer, the ending scene, new actions layer. That needs to happen on frame 1 and frame 10, so F7, paste that in. So either we get the good ending or the bad ending, the score will update. All right, so lastly for this video, we then need to set up these buttons to start over. I want to change my setup a little bit. We've got different instances of these symbols in different frames. I want to make a new layer called Buttons. And I'm going to move both of these into that layer. So selecting the first button, I'll cut it and paste it into the buttons layer. Right click, paste in place so that it comes into the same place. Select the button of quit, cut it, paste it into frame one, right click, paste in place. So I took it from layer one ending good but also ending bad has copies of them. So we need to remove those. So you see now I've got the buttons on their own layer visible on frame one or 10, and they're both gonna do the same thing, to start over or to quit. Okay, we need to turn these buttons into symbols, add the event listener, and then the functions. So F8 on that, MC button start over, select that F8, MC button quit, both need instance names, same thing is fine, MC button start over. MC button quit. So those two have instance names now. I can refer to them in the action script. So in the code, I need to uh, make those uh, pay attention. So MC button, let's do quit first. Add event listener. Touch event dot touch underscore tap comma fn game quit defining that function which was governed by an event of touch event. Okay, so the point of this is they've had enough, they want to quit, they want to exit the game. So we've got our first new command. Everything we've done so far in this video, it's things we've done in the lecture, but here's a brand new one. Command to quit the game and return to your device. That is native, capital N, application dot native application lowercase n uppercase a dot exit open close parentheses zero so if someone hits that the quit button it exits the game for starting over we need mc button start over add event listener
touch event dot touch underscore tab fn game start over. This function is then defined next. Open close parentheses colon void. Event touch event. So we need to move back with a go to and play back to frame one of scene one, scene zero title. We've got a this root. And so the button there is supposed to take us back to scene zero title. So on the win screen of game over, we've got our buttons active. I'm going to test it out. I'm first going to play the game. Oh, I got a little error here. So let's see what I'm missing. Access of undefined property S zero title. Uh, S zero title. Oh, yes, that's got to be in quotes. Sorry about that. You might have typed it properly. So that's in quotes. It's a string. It's the name of the scene. It's got to be in quotes. Try that again. No error. OK, so this um, I'm going to try to get the positive ending first. I'm going to hit the boss the required 10 times to take me to the good ending. And then I'll quit. Quits my app completely. I'll play the game again. Start. I'll get to the boss. Tap it enough to kill it. Instead, I'll click Start Over. It starts over. If I then test it and get the bad ending, and I try to press those buttons, nothing will work. Well, what's happening is, logically, see how we have code in frame 1 and frame 10. Frame 1, the good ending, we have the event listener listen for the button to be pressed and then do the function. We don't have the quit event listener in the bad ending action script. All we have here is display the current high score. So I'm going to copy and paste the event listener. We don't need to paste in the function. The function is already defined back on the previous frame. We just need the event listener. And so I need also the event listener for the start over button only the event listener, not the function definition, also in frame 10. So you see there, frame 10, scene 2. So frame 10 is the bad ending. And now when I test this, I can try to get the bad ending by not letting, by not tapping the boss, by letting it kill me. And then I could try those two buttons. So I'll start the game again. Get one point, maybe tap the boss one time, but I let it kill me. It takes me to the game over screen. I click quit. The game is quit. I'll play the game again. I'll get to the boss. I won't kill it in time. To get to the game over screen, I'll click start over. Starts over. So now we've got working our game, the basic concept of it completely. We've got our title screen where we can go to start the game or help. We can go from help back to title. From here, then we go to the first wave of enemies, very short, simple wave, four seconds animation, but a timer of three seconds. You can set that to like 10 seconds or more so that these guys run around more and you rack up more points. After the timer runs out, we go to the boss, and you've only got four seconds for the boss 
before the boss gets you. If it gets you, then it takes you to scene two ending, ending bad frame. But if you tap it enough times, if you do kill it the prerequisite hit points, it'll take you to scene two ending good. And from there, you can decide to start over or quit. And your score is then displayed on screen. So if you got this far, great. You've got the basics of the app working. Uh, on the next video, I'm going to do sound, and then that will polish up your game. So I'll see you on the next video.